Hey guys, today in the shop we're going to be installing the IPR oil cooler with the full flow coolant filter on the shop truck. You're not going to want to miss this. Stay tuned. So this video is going to be a pretty in-depth install on, uh, on this coolant filter, uh, I mean this, cool, this oil cooler I should say, and the full flow coolant filter. Um, now before we get into the install, what I want to kind of talk about is the benefits of this system and why you would want to install this versus just the OEM cooler. Um, obviously the cost on a kit like this is quite a bit more than an OEM cooler, um, so there's got to be some justification to that. So <clears throat> the number one thing is it takes the cooler out of the valley and it relocates it to inside the engine compartment out of the engine where it's easily accessible. Now the benefit of this is if you ever do have another failure, it's extremely easy to change. Um, this kit uses the 6.7 oil cooler out of the, uh, the 11 and up Fords. Um, this is a much better cooler. It's a little bit more efficient, has, has some better flow characteristics. So that's a nice feature of this kit. Uh, the biggest benefit to doing a kit like this though is the ability to put in the full flow coolant filter. So all these other cooling filter kits you see on the market that have the little uh, filter that mounts up by the radiator, the issue with them is it only takes a sample of the coolant. Now don't get me wrong, if you're on a budget and you can't afford to do something like this, those filters do help some. Um, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, the number one cause of failure on factory Ford oil coolers is plugging up with sediment inside the cooling system. They used sand to cast the blocks. There's all sorts of uh, corrosion that builds up. The corrosion breaks off and just plugs these coolers right up. So the cooling filter is what helps prevent that. Now, this coolant filter is full flow. So what it does is it takes every bit of coolant that flows out of the engine into the oil cooler and it filters it before it gets to the oil cooler. So there's zero chance of plugging up a cooler like this unless you have this thing set to bypass, which obviously defeats the purpose of this. Another nice benefit is the coolant filters that you normally get that sit up by the radiator that have that little spin-on cartridge. It's one and done. Once that, cooler, once that filter is plugged up, you take it off, throw it in the trash. Where this filter actually is a nice stainless filter inside there and it's washable and reusable. So gives you a little tool to take, disassemble this filter, take the, uh, the little screen out, clean it off, put it back together, and you can reuse it. So it's a really nice kit. Seems pretty complete. Um, I'm going to go through. The instructions are a little bit detailed, and uh, if you miss any steps, you can, you can have some issues. So it's very important on a job this big that you just read through the instructions thoroughly. Uh, I'm going to give you some pointers and some, some ideas on some of the install and removal process, remote removal and install process on this, but um, make sure you read the instructions. Make sure you have every single part you need to start before you start tearing your truck apart. But uh, I mean, that's it. I'm going to get the, I'm going to get the shop truck inside. We're going to start tearing it down and uh, we'll go through there. All right. So the first steps I like to take on any kind of job like this is disconnect the negative battery cables. This is just to prevent any accidents, anything arcing or anything like that. Then you want to start draining the coolant. Uh, this can take some time, so it's a good thing to, to start in the beginning. Now, while we're on the subject of coolant, the real benefit to one of these coolers is it uses the coolant to help maintain the proper oil temperature. Some of the aftermarket kits that have an uh, air-to-oil cooler uh, have a little bit of a hard time regulating the oil temperature. I mean, uh, you know, from the factory, they use an oil to coolant cooler because, uh, you know, the, the cooling system is so large, has a good thermostat system and fan system, and it really helps regulate the oil temperature properly. You got to remember, your oil operates best when it's at operating temperature. You really don't want it any, uh, any cooler than that, and you really don't want it any hotter than that for optimal performance. Additionally, according to IPR, the tests they've done have shown that the liquid to oil cooling really shines 
during like a towing situation. Um, in these situations, you have typically reduced travel speeds with elevated engine oil temperatures and the, you know, what's happened is you're putting a large load on the vehicle and you're seeing less airflow across the radiator. So the radiators in these trucks are really efficient. The fans are really efficient. But now if you use an air to oil cooler, uh, you're really depending on the incoming airflow to, to keep that cooler cool. Um, the truck does a pretty good job of maintaining its cooling system temperature. Like I said, this is why from the factory they chose to use in a, an oil to coolant type of cooler. Um, it's just the more efficient way to go. So like I said, this can help in both uphill, long climbs, slow speeds, um, heavy load, and then also on the deceleration where you have the same increased engine RPM, increased load, and reduced airflow. Uh, all these situations is where a oil to liquid cooler really shines. Once the coolant's drained down, you can start to take the hoses off the degas bottle. Disconnect the mass air sensor. Pull out the filter minder and start to pull the air filter assembly out as one piece. Then you can take the other hose off the degas bottle. Lower hose, finally unbolt the degas bottle, and remove it from the truck. Then you can take the intercooler pipes off the driver's side and the passenger side. All right, after you get all that stuff off, the next thing I like to attack is the belt and the alternator. Um, little trick to make it easy to get to this stuff is this little shroud right here is just held on by some clips. If you pull the rubber back from the fan shroud, you'll see that there's just little tabs that hold it on. So you can just take like a little right angle pick or anything like that and just kind of get in and start working your way around and pop them all off one at a time and you can just get this right out of your way. So to take the belt off on a six liter, uh, it seems more intimidating than it really is. Um, there's a slot, or I should say like a, a square cutout on the tensioner to fit like a half inch drive, but I really don't suggest doing it that way. Um, the easiest way that I found, you gotta use a little bit of muscle to do it, but if you look on the tensioner itself, there's a little tab, and uh, I'll put a picture of that up right here. And what you do is once you get this little shield off, you grab a little pry bar, kind of get it down so you can get the pry bar to push that tab in. So what that tab does is it'll hold the tensioner in place uh, once you get the tension off the belt. So now you gotta take, this is where the strength comes in. You grab onto the belt on the passenger side and you pull on the belt as hard as you can and keep, keep a little bit of tension with the uh, pry bar until that tab falls into place and then just slowly release the belt and the tensioner will actually lock into position. So it goes kind of like this. Then you can just take the belt off, leaving it on the rest of the accessories.
All right, so now you can disconnect the uh, battery cable going to the alternator, unplug the connector, and remove the alternator. Next up, I like to work on getting the intake horn out of the way. If you have a 03, 04 model, you're gonna have the, the two piece where it's a short intake horn and you have like a throttle body or like a blank throttle body spacer underneath it. Um, if you have like a later model, it's just gonna be a single horn with a with eight millimeter bolts holding it down. The older style is a little more tricky. It's got some bolts holding it down and some Allen bolts underneath that. So you're gonna take it off in two pieces. At this point, I always suggest either putting a rag in the intake hole or covering it up with some tape. You just don't want to be dropping anything inside that because obviously it can lead right down to the ports and then right into your cylinder head and that's really not something you want going on. All right, so the next couple things we got to get out of the way are going to be this little black intake boot that connects directly to the turbo and then we'll go after the oil filter housing and fuel bowl assembly. So on the little boot, pretty self-explanatory, there's just going to be one 8 millimeter or 5 16 clamp that holds it on to the turbo itself. So you're going to want to loosen that worm clamp up. And then once you get that worm clamp loose, then you can take off the two nuts that hold the bracket onto the ficum itself. Uh, once you get that bracket unbolted, then you can just pop the tube out of the valve cover. Maybe you might need a little pry bar to pop this up off the ficum bracket and then you can pull the whole intake tube out. So now let's work on getting this uh, oil filter and fuel bowl out of the way. So what we gotta do first, obviously pop the oil filter out and then take the lines off of the uh, fuel bowl. Um, if you have any questions about this, I go over a few details in my Blue Spring video, but um, just make sure you put some zip ties on the line so the tube nuts don't fall too far down. And then also make sure you use a backup wrench on these. So if you don't use a wrench on the line and the fitting, most of the time the fitting will spin out of the housing. And then what happens is you end up twisting the line. So let's just get this off. Um, make sure you use that wrench, zip ties, and you should be good to go. Then you can remove the four T45 Torx bits that hold the housing in place. Then there's a T25 Torx bit that holds down the plastic oil filter standpipe. So you can take that bolt out, then turn the standpipe counterclockwise and lift it up out. All right, now next up, getting this turbo out of here. So slight differences between the 03 t style turbo and the later style turbos. Um, but either way, first thing you want to do is get this little uh, wire guard out of the way. I like to unclip it from underneath where the degas bottle goes and then start to unclip the little push pins that hold the, uh, the guard up. Then I take it, fold it up, and zip tie it to the wiper arm. Then there's two 10 millimeters that hold the feed line to the top of the turbo. Then on the O3s, there's a snap to connect fitting that you need one of these release tools. It's the same tool that you use to release the uh, snap to connect fittings on like the high pressure oil rails or on a 7.3 where the high pressure oil lines go to the uh, pump. Take that, slide it in, release the snap to connect, and then you can pull the fitting right up.
and the V-band clamps for the up pipe and down pipe. So I have a little trick to taking these up pipe and down pipe clamps off. Uh, a lot of times, once you loosen up the, uh, the bolts on them, the T-bolts, the clamp is still stuck onto the pipe. So some of you may know this trick, some of you may not, but what I do is I take an air hammer with a long bit and then just make sure it's not too sharp so you don't do any damage. Then I just take it and I put it right next to the clamp and actually hit the, the flange itself with a couple of light, light blips and it usually just breaks free. There's three bolts holding the turbo in after that. So it's one right in the front, straight down here. And then on the opposite side of the turbo in almost the exact same location, there's another one. Then on the back of the turbo, on the early style turbos, the bolt comes in towards the turbo. So it's basically the opposite direction of this, straight into the back. It's kind of a pain, you gotta reach down, you gotta use a nice uh, wrench that's got a good grip on it. If you use a cheap wrench, it'll just strip the bolt right out. Um, so make sure right off the bat you use a nice wrench. Um, once you get a wrench on the bolt, you can kind of use a pry bar. For example, if you put, a, put the wrench on here and you can't get it to crack free, you can use a pry bar to kind of push on the wrench and it'll help crack it free. Especially on that back one, you're going to have a really hard time getting the leverage that you need uh, behind the turbo. There's not a lot of room back there to put your hand, so use the pry bar. Like I said, make sure you have a really good wrench. This is where, you know, snap on and blue point, there is a difference. Uh, you know, the more expensive tools, uh, definitely your 10 millimeter ratchet wrench or a nice 10 millimeter wrench, it's got to be a good one. Get those three bolts out and then you can lift the turbo up off the pedestal and pull the turbo right out. All right, so now we're down to the intake. Uh, this is a 2003, so we do have the crossover in the back. That definitely makes it a little bit more tricky, but not the end of the world. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just go, gonna go over real quick with you a couple of things that you need to get disconnected, and then we can, uh, we can go from there. So on the front of the intake manifold, going through the fan shroud, there are two 15 millimeter bolts. Um, you kind of have to reach in through the fan shroud to get them. They're a little bit of a pain, but if you take those two bolts out, pull those out of the fan shroud, that disconnects that. There's one more 10 millimeter bolt right here that connects the fuel line off of the fuel bowl over to the passenger side head. Then right over here is this coolant tube. So. The issue you're gonna have with this coolant tube is a lot of times down this bottom end, it gets stuck in the front cover. So there's an eight millimeter bolt here and an eight millimeter bolt there. Take both of them out, try to get this tube out. If you can't get this tube out, you can leave it in. I try not to do it this way, but considering how crusty this one's looking, it might be the way I gotta do it. But you take this bolt out and then you just bend this tab up just a little bit and then it gives you the clearance to get the intake out. So take all those off, take off the wiring that goes from here. It's the uh, fusible links, unplug the glow plug harness from the uh, glow plug module, 
and then take this heater hose off. Once you get that stuff off, you can kind of get some of the wiring harnesses out of the way. And then we can work on unpl unplugging the injector harness and then disconnecting the map sensor hose. And then it's just a matter of unbolting the intake manifold. This being an 03, we have to take the turbo pedestal out before we can get the intake manifold out. Um, that crossover stops it from being able to come out because of the up pipes and the down pipe and everything. So we're going to take all those off. Uh, once I get to that point, I'm going to stop. I'm going to show you about the injector harnesses and I'm going to show you about the EGR cooler and a couple of tricks I use to keep the harness out of the way and we'll go from there. So I'm just going to skip ahead. I'm going to get all this stuff unbolted and then I'll be back with you in a little bit. Once you get all that stuff unbolted and unclipped, uh, we can work on the injector harness. So there's one 10 millimeter nut in the back that holds a uh, ground strap on. And what I will tell you is try to take it off, but most likely the whole stud that goes through the intake manifold is probably going to spin with it. So be prepared to have to crimp a new connector on that because there's almost really no way to stop it from spinning once it's already broken free. Um, so if it does spin, don't keep wrapping it around. Don't twist the, the cable up. Just uh, wiggle the wire back and forth until it breaks off right at the stud. And then just crimp a new eyelet on the end of that. And then what you're going to do is just push in on the little tab on the injector harness. So you don't need to pull that tab off. You just push in on it and then it releases the injector clip and you can pull them off. So we're in the home stretch at this assembly here. Uh, I know this has been a long video, and matter of fact, I'm not sure, well, you guys will know by the end of this, but I might break this up into two parts, but uh, all that we have left to pull this intake out is two very simple steps. Now, the first step I'm going to tell you might be the most important thing I tell you on this entire job. Uh, on the sides of the intake manifold, where the intake manifold meets the, the head, it's very common to have debris build up in there. Uh, a very common rookie mistake that happens is people take all the bolts out of the intake manifold and then they lift up on the intake manifold and all the debris that's on the sides of the intake fall into the ports. Um, so what I suggest is take a blowgun and blow it out all the way down there. Make sure everything is all nice and clean, both sides completely clean, take a flashlight and shine it down in there, make sure there's nothing. I've seen nuts, bolts, uh, you name it, I've seen inside those, um, those little crevices there. So clean those out really good. And then once you get those cleaned out, you can take on, the, on this particular model, there's a shield on top of the intake. Take that off, take all the bolts, loosen them up. Now, Keep the bolts in the intake manifold. Loosen them all the way up, pick them up so you can feel that they come out, but leave them in. I do that, that way I know, see, some of them are studs, some of them are bolts. You want them to go back exactly where they came from. Um, get all the plenum bolts out, and then there's two bolts on the front of the EGR cooler and one bolt on the back of the EGR cooler. Let's get all those bolts out, and then I'm just gonna show you how to pop it out, and that'll be it for this assembly. All right, everything's unbolted. Make sure all your harnesses are out of the way. Make sure everything's clear. Double check, make sure you unclipped all your injectors. Everything is good to go. So what I like to do is take a pry bar and kind of stick it in between the intake manifold and the EGR cooler. And what this does is it'll pop the EGR cooler out of the intake manifold and also lift the intake at the same time. The cooler has an O-ring that goes into the manifold and they kind of get stuck a little bit. Not terribly, but just take that pry bar and you just push down. And then once you pop that out of there, you can kind of lift up on the intake. Sometimes they get a little bit stuck in the fan shroud. So you're going to pry the fan shroud forward and then lift up. Once again, being very careful to make sure you're not snagging on anything. 
You gotta watch the fuel line on the front. Tuck it around. All right, so now that your intake's out, um, first thing I like to do is go ahead and either use some tape or some rags and let's get these intake ports covered up. Once again, just trying to reiterate, you really don't want to drop anything in this motor. Uh, never a fun day when you get something like that going on. So let's get these taped up. We'll get the EGR cooler out, out of the way and then we'll get the oil cooler out. EGR cool is pretty simple to remove at this point. You just got the one clamp in the back, same thing, band clamp, just like the turbos. If it's stuck, you can do the same thing or you can pry it off if you want. And then in the front where the EGR cooler attaches to the oil cooler, there's a little rubber tube. Um, if you have the old orange style like this one, they can be a real pain to get off. Uh, they usually don't like to come off in one piece. So just cut it right down the middle and uh, take it off. And you're gonna wanna update to this blue one anyway. The orange ones are prone to leaking. The blue ones still do leak sometimes, but this is an updated part. Doesn't leak as often, so um, just cut that orange one out of the way, and then you can mess with trying to get the remnants of it off the oil cooler once you have it out. But how these actually work is there's two little tabs in here, and then on the oil cooler itself, there's two little almost like detents where it goes on, and you twist this until you start to feel the detents engage and then you can slide it back off the oil cooler onto the EGR cooler. Um, I can show you that once this thing is off the truck and I'll show you how, exactly how this clips on but for right now just cut that thing in half, take the clamp off the EGR cooler and let's get this EGR cooler out of here. So at this point, what I like to do is I like to stick the turbo drain back into the oil cooler just so you don't get any debris go down inside there. And then just clean this all out, all around the oil cooler. Um, you, you can see, I don't, I don't know if you can see on video, but this one is completely full of nuts. Looks like maybe there was a squirrel or a mouse living in this one or something. Truck did sit for a while, but just really take your time, use a shop vac, uh, then blow gun and make sure everything all around the oil cooler and the high pressure pump cover and everything is just spotless. Clean it up as best you can. If you pull this oil cooler out and there's still debris around it, all that debris will fall into the high pressure pump reservoir. So you want to make sure you get this as clean as you possibly can before you start taking off the oil cooler. Or if you were in here doing a high pressure pump, same thing. You don't want to pull that high pressure pump cover off and have all this debris fall in there. So I'm going to cut to this. I'm just going to Get this all cleaned out and then uh, I'll see you in a few minutes for taking the oil cooler out and a few ways to prevent making a mess. Once it's all cleaned out then uh, what I do is I usually put a rag right across the back between the uh, oil cooler and the high pressure pump cover and what that does is when you pull this oil cooler up out of here the reservoir is pretty full so it ends up running down the back of the motor and this just kind of prevents you having a clean the whole bell housing up and all that. So I just put a rag there, let that kind of absorb. And then you can take the 10, 10 millimeter bolts that go all the way around the base of the oil cooler. Once those bolts are out, pick the oil cooler up and then just turn it 90 degrees and then you can kind of rest it back on top of the engine. But the oil cooler dangling down itself keeps it up and then it just kind of lets it drip. Then what I do is I grab an absorbent mat I put it kind of like right next to the motor and then I just pick the oil cooler assembly right up, put it on top and uh, just kind of carry it away. Now, one thing I want to tell you right now, do not use any kind of red rags, shop rags, or even an absorbent mat like this 
to clean out that high pressure oil pump reservoir, the reservoir under the oil cooler. If you do, all of the lint from that will either clog up the screen or make it past the screen and clog up your IPR. Once again, do not use any kind of red rags, anything like that to clean out this housing. So I try to keep these absorb mats as far away from that opening as possible. Any kind of lint, any kind of debris, you want to keep it out of there. All right, so now that we get this cooler assembly out and on the bench, what you're gonna to wanna to do is start to disassemble it. So you're gonna need a T30 Torx bit and a T45 Torx bit. And you'll see there's a bunch of Torx, Torx bits on the top, small T30s, and also the T45s. Now, a little piece of advice, depending on how gummed up your truck is, some of these is not a big deal, some of them you'll be really bad, but just try to clean out the holes for the Torx bits first. I usually use like a little pick, um, just, that way you can get your Torx adapter, your Torx bit, all the way down inside the hole because if you don't, it'll strip out the, it'll strip out the drive on it. So just clean it all up, take all those Torx bolts out, and then we'll pop it apart. After you get all the bolts off, you can start taking this whole cooler assembly apart. So. Sometimes this stuff's a little stuck on here. Um, the first thing you want to do is pop off this little cover. This, uh, you don't need this anymore. So you can actually put that to the side. And then the little adapter where the EGR cooler goes in, this is usually a little stuck on the O-ring. So you might need two pry bars, kind of work it back and forth. And um, eventually it'll come off, but if it's, original like this one probably is it's gonna fight you a little bit so just keep wiggling it eventually it'll come off then you can pry this top cover off put that to the side So all that's left holding this together is two 13 millimeter nuts on the top and then directly underneath there's two 13 millimeter bolts that go up through the cooler and you'll be able to tell which side they are because it's the side that has these two little nubs right here. Um, be cautious if you turn this thing upside down make sure you have a bucket because the oil cooler is full of oil and full of coolant so if you flip it completely upside down and take those bolts off it's gonna make a mess unless you have something to clean it up. I usually just take the two top off and then I just kinda of lift it up and go blindly underneath with the gun and take those two out. But if you need to, just flip it over, put it in a bucket, it's not really a big deal. The kit provides you with two new bolts, uh, the ones that go up through the bottom. These are too short. You don't want to use these. They're not going to be long enough. So you can uh, discard these with that other smaller top cover. Just put it aside. I say discard, but I, stuff like this I never like to throw away. You never know when, uh, when you need it again. So at this stage, I like to put an absorbent mat down under the oil cooler so I don't make a huge mess of my bench. And... It's pretty simple to get this thing popped apart. What I usually do is I take two pieces of wood, two by fours, whatever you got kicking around, and put them under the edges of the oil cooler. Then all you need is a hammer and a socket you really don't care much about. And what you're going to do is the little spout that sticks up, you're going to hit on that with the hammer, and then the other round one right here where it comes through, use a socket. Now you need to make sure the socket is a smaller diameter than the cooler 
housing itself, but also still fits over the cooler. So you just put that socket on there and give it a couple of whacks and then same thing back here, back and forth. Then the cooler drops right out. Take this and throw it in the trash. After you drain it, of course. Now just take all the old O-rings out. They all gotta go. The bottom ones, you'll usually tell if it's been in here for a while, all these gaskets underneath are pretty flattened out. Pretty big cause of oil leaks that leak down into the valley and down the back side of the motor is all these gaskets being flattened right out. Take them all out of there, flip the housing over, and there's a couple of O-rings that go, they actually stuck to this cooler as I pulled it out. There's a couple of O-rings that go in the housing right there. Then there's a small one here where the bolt passes through. Now, this is an early style housing. If you have a later style housing, there's actually a little uh, bung that goes in that allows the bolt to thread in. And you gotta push that out, there's an O-ring on that. I actually have another cooler that I'll show you on in a minute, another housing I'll show you on in a minute, but you gotta push that little thing out, change the O-ring on there, otherwise you can have leaks there too. All right, so we got this all disassembled ready to go, all you gotta do is clean this thing up. Uh, if you got a parts washer, do that, one of those steam cleaners, whatever you gotta do to get this stuff as clean as possible. Uh, I'm gonna use a little bit of the power of movie magic and I'm gonna get these things clean. So three, two, one. That was easy. <laughs> so this is actually a newer style housing. I, uh, I had another oil cooler set up kicking around so I just kind of pre-cleaned it, make this job go a little smoother. So this is the piece I was talking about. You can see it has a little hex head on it right there. And then on the top, you can see it pokes through. And it's the only piece on here that's made out of steel besides this, well actually this is brass, but it's the only piece that's made out of steel. So if you just take the handle of your hammer and just pop it through, you can see there's a little O-ring on this. You gotta make sure you change that O-ring. Like I said, that can be a cause of an issue. And now we can start reassembling all this. So there's an O-ring that goes around this piece in the kit. The kit comes with all the O-rings you should need. So I like to get this one done out of the way before I forget. And I usually just use, I take like a brake cleaner can and I put a little bit of fresh oil in a, a cap for a can, I should say. Put a little fresh oil in it, and that's what I use to lubricate the O-rings. Some people use grease. I just like to use some good old uh, 1540. And you can just take this, put it back in its hole, and pop it right in. And then there's gonna be a couple of O-rings that go on the bottom. They either got stuck to your cooler or you had to pull them out. So there's a small one, goes in there, And then there's gonna be two larger diameter O-rings. That go in. And then this piece right here has the two bolt holes that go through it and then the one nut from the top. So you're going to install this in, push it in nice and gentle, make sure that all your O-rings are seated all the way and you can get the two bolts here started and then you can flip it over and then get the one nut in the middle started.
keep in mind, this is where you're going to use those two longer bolts that come with the kit. Very important. The other ones might reach, but they're only going to grab a, one or two threads and uh, not a very good situation. On the top side, it just uses one of the factory nuts that you took off. After you get those hand tight, uh, you want, you're going to want to torque the bottom bolts to 16 foot-pounds. Then you can install the O-rings onto the other crossover. So pay close attention, there's two different size O-rings, there's a smaller one and a bigger one. You'll see the, the lands where they go, the, the one closest to the housing, sorry, closest to the, the bottom is the larger O-ring and the top one is the smaller O-ring. Just put them on nice and easy, make sure not to cut anything. I like to use my fingers to put them on and no tools. Then use some motor oil, lubricate those O-rings. Now you can take this and you'll see the stud is kind of offset. You really can't put this in the wrong way. Um, the stud doesn't line up with the hole if you have it in the wrong direction. So it can really only go in one way. I like to put it in and just press and you'll feel the O-rings kind of pop in. It's definitely going to take a little bit of force and it's not fun. Sometimes it can be tricky. Then you can flip it over, then use that last factory nut. Get that started, and then torque both of these nuts to 16 foot-pounds. Now you can install the rest of the gaskets into the housing. Just make sure they're seated all the way in. There's little nubs all the way where the gasket sticks into. And if you don't push them all the way in, when you flip it over, the gasket tends to want to fall out on you. So just make sure it's in all the grooves nice, seated in properly. When you turn it upside down, the gasket shouldn't fall out. Then you can rest that right on the oil cooler assembly. Then you can take this housing. It's where the little EGR cooler hose goes on to. And same thing, takes a little bit of force, but just push that down. Then you can install all the bolts, the T30s and the T45s, except for this right now. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But just go ahead and get all the bolts that hold these in and torque them down. All the T45 bolts are 16 foot-pounds, and all of the T30 bolts are 7 foot-pounds. So now with the two remaining torque bits, you can... Uh, Install this little manifold. Now, very important here, it does come pre-installed, but you want to make sure that the outside O-ring is here and then also the inside O-ring. If those O-rings aren't both there, this can bypass and then you have some issues. So just check, verify, make sure that both of those O-rings are in place before you put this on and then you can install it and then same thing, torque it down to seven foot-pounds. All right, so now just make sure to install the, uh, the actual gasket that seals the cooler 
to the block. And then you're ready to install. So one other thing I want to talk about before we install this is this stainless screen that IPR makes. So the screen that goes underneath the oil cooler and feeds to the high pressure oil pump is made out of like a really poorly designed plastic screen that just deteriorates. Especially as time goes on, the engines get lots of heat cycles, the screen actually can blow through. Um, when that happens, you have nothing stopping debris from going to your high pressure oil pump, which in turn goes to your IPR and also your injectors. So IPR research came out with this screen and what it is is uh, double layers of a stainless steel mesh. It's all metal construction. There's really no way for this thing to fail, at least no way that I can see. So this is the last line of defense before your high pressure oil system. Um, it's a really great idea. Even if you're not doing this kit, even if you're just doing a factory oil cooler install to uh, call up IPR, get one of these screens. It's definitely saved quite a few IPRs in my career. So um, at least grab one of these. Make sure that that oil filter, that oil cooler reservoir underneath there is nice and clean. Pop this screen in and then you're ready to put your oil cooler in. So now you can install the screen. Install the cooler housing assembly. Install the 10 bolts holding it down. And then torque them to 16 foot pounds. So now you can reinstall your EGR cooler or delete or whatever you're doing at this time. I'm putting a cooler back in this one because I live in Massachusetts and this truck's gonna be street driven, so really kinda of gonna put the right stuff back in. So what I do is I take the little blue connector hose and I slide it onto the EGR cooler as far up as it can go. And then I usually just take two little dabs of silicone on the back side of the cooler and stick the gasket on. And I just do that just so it doesn't fall off because uh, these can be a pain sometimes as you're trying to get it in there, the gasket falls down, you can't get the EGR cooler lined up correctly. So I slide it in, hold it up to the up pipes, then what I do is I take the clamp and I put the clamp around the EGR cooler. Then I hold the cooler back towards the up pipes and I slide the blue hose. Now this, you got to kind of like almost spin it as you're pushing it on. It makes it go on easier and you're going to keep going until it almost clicks into place. You'll feel it. And then just rotate it a little and make sure it's not on those little detents I talked about. Then what I do is Tighten up the clamp that goes from the EGR cool to the up pipes, but don't crank it all the way down. You want to tighten it just enough so the cooler can still rotate and wiggle just a little bit. And the reason I do that is to make it a lot easier to get the intake manifold lined up. So just tighten it till it's almost snug and then back it off just like a half a turn. Once you do that, we can put the gasket on the front. Make sure you change this O-ring, the big O-ring that goes to the front cover and then we can put new gaskets on the intake manifold. I like to install the gaskets onto the bolts. They're actually the holes on the intake manifold gasket that the bolts go through are smaller than the bolts so you can actually install the gaskets onto the bottom of the manifold and then sneak the manifold in. That way you don't got to try to line the gaskets up and line the bolts up. You just put it all in one piece. Same thing, I like to put a couple of little dabs of silicone on the gasket for the EGR cooler to the intake manifold. 
Um, this is just to hold it in place. You're not putting this silicone on to seal it. It's a metal shim gasket. It should seal on its own. And you want to use as little as possible. Some people will use a little bit of grease or weather stripping adhesive, but basically this holds this gasket in place while you line the intake manifold up with the EGR cooler. Some people will bolt the EGR cooler to the bottom of the intake manifold first and then put it all in as one piece. I personally don't like doing it that way. If you struggle getting these bolts to line up, the two front bolts that go through the intake manifold into the cooler, you can do it that way. You can take the cooler back out, bolt it to the bottom of the intake manifold, leave it a little bit loose, same thing so it moves around. It just makes that rear clamp really tricky to do. Uh, once you've done a couple of them this way, you kind of get the idea of how to put it in tail end first and then drop it down and wiggle the cooler around till it lines up. And then before you tighten anything, you've got to make sure all of the bolts are started. So I'm just going to drop this intake manifold on. Uh, I'm going to keep my mouth shut for a little while and just kind of show you guys what to do. And then we're going to torque the intake manifold down, turbo pedestal, turbo, and then go from there. Torque the intake manifold bolts to eight foot pounds. Then finish tightening the EGR cooler to up pipe clamp. Next up, reinstall your turbo pedestal. Install new O-rings on your turbo drain tube and lightly lubricate them. I'm actually installing, there's an updated drain tube and it allows more flow. Uh, it was one of those things, the factory drain tube was a little restrictive. This is an update from Ford. So if you do go to Ford and get a drain tube for your turbo, it's gonna be the new updated one. So you're just gonna slide that in and install it. You wanna make sure that it's seated all the way into the high pressure pump housing. If it's not, when you go to install your turbo, this thing could pop out. And if you don't notice that, Every bit of oil that feeds into your turbo is just going to drain right back on top of your motor. So make sure that's seated all the way in. At this point, I like to start to flip all my harnesses back over into place. Start getting everything plugged back in. Be really careful with your injector harnesses to make sure you don't bend any pins over. Got to go in nice and straight and sometimes just got to give them a little wiggle to get them in. Put the clamp on the up pipes. kind of push it back out of your way. If you haven't done it in a while, probably a good idea to clean the turbo before you install it back in. I do have another video showing that. I'll put a link in the description below. But just sneak the turbo in, get the bolt started, leave them kind of a little loose, and then get the up pipe clamp started. So next up is installing the hoses that come off of that manifold that we put on the oil cooler housing. Um, pay close attention to the instructions. If you're not sure, it's always good to refer back to them. And I 
Like anything else, I encourage you to read completely through the instructions before you decide to start working on this at all. But what you want to do is for this, we're not doing an EGR delete. <clears throat> so you want to run the, the back hose is going to be 36 inches and the front hose is going to be 33 inches. Now in the instructions, it says to orient the clamps so they're facing forward so you can easily access them if you need to service it later on. So we're going to do exactly that. So a 36 inch piece of hose in the back and a 33 inch hose in the front. Now you can install the new oil filter standpipe and bolt it down. Then reinstall the oil and fuel filter housing. Fuel lines. and fan shroud bolts. If you haven't already, install the oil feed tube with the new gasket. Intake elbow can go on. If you took the glow plug module off, you can reinstall that now. Then the alternator. And the belt. All right, now that all your accessories are back on, your intake plenum, fuel bowl and oil filter housing, all that stuff is back together. Now we can actually start installing this kit. The rest of the, the cooler itself, the filter, and it starts off by put the oil filter in. Then start to make sure you lubricate the O-ring on the, on the housing. And then start threading this in. Okay, so the letters IPR need to be parallel with the firewall. If they're not, you'll have issues with the fittings lining up. So there's a very specific way they want you to turn this. What you do is you loosen up these three bolts, which I've already done here. This one can actually be loosened up just a little bit more. You don't want to go too crazy. Um, you just want to loosen them up enough so it can rotate. And then you want to turn the top until it's parallel with the firewall. Then what they want you to do is snug the bolts up just enough so it doesn't rotate. Then you can take a marker and just make a line so you know that the, the cap doesn't move. That way when you back it off, if it doesn't line up, you can twist it back. But next step is to back the entire cap off one and a half turns. Then you torque the three set screws down to eight foot pounds. Then you can tighten the cap back into place. Next up, install the fittings. The straight fitting goes in the back. and the 45 up front. You want this 45 to face in the backwards direction. 
All right, so we're getting down to the real nitty gritty of in actually installing this uh, oil cooler kit. So once you get that filter housing in, you get the coolant lines run over to the side here, the next step is gonna be mounting the cooler itself. So what we're gonna do is, I already took the bolts out, but there's four 13 millimeter bolts that hold the battery tray in. So you're gonna to wanna to take this out, and the reason why is there's a little tab here that you gotta either bend down or cut off and deburr. Um, looking at it, the way that everything's run, I feel we're better off cutting this off, deburring it. If you're not comfortable with that, you can definitely bend it down, but um, I think getting this tab right out of the way is the best bet to go. So I'm just gonna use my uh, little Milwaukee cutoff wheel and uh, just chop that piece right off, clean it up, and uh, reinstall the battery tray. So once you get that tab cut off, now you can reinstall the battery tray. Uh, on the 2003 trucks, it already has a little bracket that you can mount the oil cooler right to. Some guys will cut this off, use the IPR bracket. Um, you really don't need to. You can bolt the oil cooler right to these two mounting holes right here. Um, if you have an 04 and up truck, you gotta use the bracket that is provided with the kit. And what that does basically is it uses the two bolts underneath the battery tray. So you would, before you bolt the battery tray down, you can slide this under and then put the battery tray on top and then put the bolts through. But we don't need to use this bracket, so I'm gonna put it aside. Take the oil cooler and mount it right up. One minor detail is this AC line right here may need to be bent out of the way just a little bit. Uh, don't go crazy, just get it out of the way just enough so it's not chafing on anything, but you might just need to push that a little bit one direction or another. Then you can mount the cooler and then put the nuts on the bottom. I would say at this point, it's a good idea to get the at least the passenger side intercooler pipe in. Um, I say that because you really wanna make sure you route all these hoses with everything in mind. You don't wanna route some of this stuff and then have things interfere, tie things in the wrong way, and then you're cutting off zip ties and everything. So just get these pipes, at least this side reinstalled, and then, uh, then we can run the lines for the cooler itself. Next, you wanna mount the coolant filter itself. So it goes over here on the passenger side. Just uh, loosely assemble the, the filter and the bracket and everything, and just take a nice little Sharpie and line it up, find a good spot so it clears everything. Mark the inner fender here, and then just pre-drill pre -drill some holes. And once you get the holes pre-drilled, you can use the, the sheet metal screws that are supplied. Don't over tighten them. If you tighten those sheet metal screws too much, it just rips right out. So unbolt this back from the bracket, bolt the bracket up, then you can bolt the coolant filter up. All right, so now that you have the filter mounted, you can start hooking up all the hoses. So this kit comes with a coolant manifold that bolts onto the, onto the oil cooler housing that we saw earlier. And that can be used with a factory oil cooler or any of the J-tube style EGI deletes. And when you use that manifold, you run the 36 inch hose in the back, like we showed earlier, and that's the inlet. And the 34 inch hose on the front, that's the outlet. So basically you're gonna go from, with the short hose from the front of that manifold, and then you're gonna run it up and over, and that's gonna come down and into the coolant filter. So front hose on the manifold into the coolant filter. And then you're gonna go out from the coolant filter into the top of the oil cooler. Then you go from the bottom of the oil cooler, that's the other hose, the 36 inch, which is the longer of the two, and that comes down and around and goes to the bottom of the oil cooler. So inlet front down around to the coolant filter, out of the coolant filter, top of the oil cooler, and then from the oil cooler is the other hose that is the back of that manifold. Now, if you're running their Gen 3 EGR delete, 
it's going to be the opposite. So the back is going to be the outlet and the front is going to be the inlet. And same thing, the hose lengths switch. So you would just run from the back over to the coolant filter and then same thing, coolant filter to the oil cooler and then from the front down to the bottom of the oil cooler. So IPR wants you to just put a little bit of oil or grease on the flares of these uh, fittings. Just kind of makes uh, installation a little easier. And then what you want to do is the longer of the two lines goes to the bottom fitting on the oil cooler. So get that down there and get that started. And then it goes to the back fitting on the cap or the straight fitting. Then the shorter line goes to the top fitting on the oil cooler and the 45 degree fitting on the cap. So now the rest is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the biggest thing I want to go over is just make sure that all the lines are secure. You don't have anything chafing. Spend some extra time going over everything that you touch with a fine tooth comb. Make sure everything's plugged in electrical connectors and everything. Um, there should be a little bit extra of the heater hose that comes with the kit. If you need to slice that open and use that to put on any of the lines to stop things from chafing, just spend an extra half hour, 45 minutes going over everything to make sure that um, you're not gonna have any issues down the road. So then you can do things like put the degas bottle back in, the driver's side into cool the pipe, and uh, then top it off with oil, and top it off with coolant. What I suggest is fire this thing up, let it run for a little bit in the driveway, let it idle, don't drive it right away, and just observe it for leaks. Uh, it's definitely when you have anything this far apart, part, or when you're making any kind of major modification like this, just take your time, check over all of your work. Uh, it's not worth getting on the road and find out that you just dumped, you know, all your oil out on the ground and now you're got a big mess and you got a toe on your hands. So really pay attention to that. After your kit's all installed, something you need to be doing is monitoring your engine oil temperature and engine coolant temperature. This is something you should be doing on these trucks regardless of what kind of cooler you have in there. Uh, but the engine oil temperature and engine coolant temperature having a spread delta is an indicator that the coolant filter is starting to clog up. So once you start seeing 13 to 20 degrees of delta on this, that's when you're going to want to start checking your coolant filter. So so if you are starting to experience the difference in engine oil temperature and engine coolant temperature, um, you need to really make sure that you follow the cleaning procedure laid out by IPR. Uh, I will be making an additional video talking about exactly that, but make sure you follow those instructions and clean the coolant filter properly. You also should be doing a flow test before and after cleaning the filter. So I really hope this video helped you guys out. Um, whether you watch the long version or the short version, I'm going to have links in the descriptions to both videos. So uh, you'll be able to go back and forth and reference what you need to do. Um, this one was a big project and I'm really excited with the way it came out. And um, I'm happy to have you guys hanging in here and watching it for me. If you watch the long version, it's long. Um, this one was a lot of work to make. So I hope it paid off. I hope you guys really enjoy it. Um, like always guys, if, if you did like this video, hit that like button. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Um, I plan on doing a video shortly that shows exactly how to do an oil change on this IPR kit because there is a pretty specific procedure. And then I'm also going to go over cleaning the cooling filter. Um, this cooling filter, I suggest driving around for a couple of hundred miles, cleaning it out right away. And then after that, you should be able to go every oil change, cleaning the oil filter out, I mean the coolant filter out. And then if the coolant filter seems to be clean, every oil change, you can start to stretch it out a little bit. 
Um, eventually, it will get the majority of that sediment out of the motor, but it, it may take some time. Some motors are worse than others. Um, but keep an eye out for a video coming on that soon. And then next up, chassis work, lowering kit, and then we'll start on the body work. So once again, guys, thanks for watching In The Shop. Hey guys, today in the shop, we're going to be in... Haha, -ha, try again. Hey guys, today in the shop, we're going to be installing the IPR remote oil cooler setup with the... Come on. Hey guys, today in the shop, we're going to be installing the IPR remote oil cooler setup with the full flow coolant filter 